Hi ladies. So first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who watched the first video that I made in a kind of introductory video. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the ideas of things to talk about. Um, I wrote down a list and those ideas really helped. It's my list. Um, they really helped me focus how I want to do these videos and what I want to do with these videos. And um, I think what I want to do is kind of focus on one topic to talk about uh, once a week. So I came up with the ever so clever name of 52 things to talk about. So for the next year, once a week, try to make these videos just talking about one of the topics that I quite often will see coming up in the um, in the different forums and the support groups. But a lot of these ideas also came from you ladies for commenting on the first video. Um, and I, I want to make these videos for everyone. I'll be honest, I was a little bit nervous maybe sharing these on my personal page. But here's the thing. Um, well, we're going to talk a lot, a lot about cancer specific. Everybody's going through something. And we don't know how difficult it is for them because we're not them. And so for me, the way I'm doing these videos is talking about the experiences I had and talking about the experiences I'm having currently. So looking back and looking forward at the same time and being able to talk about these things. And maybe somebody doesn't specifically have cancer Maybe it's something else that they're dealing with, and maybe something we say in these conversations can help. So I'm going to try to be a little bit brave and put these up on my own Facebook page, too. Not that, you know, I mean, anybody who goes to my YouTube page can see them, but yeah, okay, so that's something that i got to work on for me. Anyway, today, week one of 52 things to talk about, I wanted to talk about staying positive. And this is not something that I think we're all going to accomplish every single day of our lives because, I mean, I, I know I don't. I don't always am the most positive person. <laughs> I try to be. I try very hard to be positive. I try very hard to um, not let things pull me down. And they do sometimes. They really do. Um, but that's okay because it's... Picking yourself back up, that's what's important. And so what I wanted to kind of introduce as a possibility is talk about the way that I try to stay positive. And it actually goes back to when I was 18 years old and a freshman in college and incredibly homesick and just not happy. I was very awkward when I was younger and um, I had a hard time making friends and I just was sad and I missed home and I didn't know how to deal with college and I didn't know how to deal with being away from home. And um, freshman year literature was always taught by Pat Keats, Dr. Pat Keats, who, um, friends of mine who watch this, y'all know, y'all know him. And uh, I ask that you please pray for him and his family as he did pass away last summer from cancer uh, and for 22 years. He's a very good friend and somebody that I really respected and somebody who, without even realizing it, gave me such an important tool in dealing with not just having cancer and everything else, but in a way, a way to deal with difficult things in life, period. And so he was the teacher who knew his students. He knew when they were doing okay and when they weren't doing okay. And when they weren't doing okay, he'd pull you aside and talk to you and see if there's anything that he could do or if there was some way that he could encourage you. And so that happened freshman year. Um, he said, you know, stay, stay after class, let's talk. And all he did was say, you don't look like you're doing so good. Are you okay? And I broke down crying. I just, I lost it. And so, you know, he, he let me cry and we talked out a lot of things, a lot of things that I was dealing with. And before I left, he said, you know, 
try one thing. He goes, what I want you to try to do going forward is every day think of something that makes you smile. Find something that makes you smile. And it can be a memory. It can be something that you see that day, something that you read. Doesn't matter where you find it. Just try to find something that makes you smile every day. Because if you find something that can make you smile every day, then the sadness or the anger or the hurt, it can't hold on as much. And I left the room thinking, how am I going to find something? There's nothing to smile about. I'm just sad. I'm, I'm homesick. I want to go home. And um, so I was walking back to my dorm. I was like, all right, let's give this a shot. And so I was like, what, what's funny? What's going to make me smile? And I turned the corner around the chapel on campus. And there I saw <laughs> uh, Ben Hackey. Sorry, it still makes me laugh. Ben Hackey on a unicycle with, I think a raccoon hat on his head, riding his unicycle up and down in front of the chapel. And I just busted out laughing to this day. That memory makes me laugh. It's something that you absolutely don't expect to see. And I turn around the corner and there it is. And it still, it still makes me laugh. It really does. And um, I started laughing. And let's face it, laughing, smiling, it does make you feel better. It does. Even if it's just a little bit, it makes you feel better. And so I think slowly I started really applying that idea to my life. Um, consciously or unconsciously, I started to try to, when I felt down, I'd be like, okay, I gotta find something that's gonna make me smile, something that's gonna make me laugh. And um, so I think the first time it was really put to the test was um, when my, my brother Peter passed away after his thir third round with cancer. And I, I never experienced something so hard in my life. And I think I really had to work very hard to pull this idea of finding something to smile about into my life. So fast forward from 2008 to 2013, and um, the diagnosis and everything. And I'm not going to say that it immediately happened. I had that thought of I have to smile to find something to smile about or it's going to pull me down even further. I think at that point I was unconsciously doing it. Because um, I remember just the weird sense of humor that I started to build up at this time. To be able to laugh. Find those things to laugh about. And to be able to laugh at things that make someone not going through it uncomfortable. <laughs> and, um, so I, I, I remember the first evening, that first long night that I was in the hospital and I had to have the, the pack cells that first time. And I remember just looking at my brother going, I'm a vampire. <laughs> There's blood going into me. And so that was unconsciously, unconsciously, even from then I was, I was just, seeing the things that they're so out of the ordinary that it's either cry or laugh and I choose to laugh not all the time definitely many times I chose to cry but that's what I really started saying to myself we cry or laugh let's find something to laugh about if we can so I really put it actively into practice when I started chemo um, I came up with goals for myself and I know it's kind of crazy to say these things. I was determined that I wasn't going to be hospitalized and I wasn't going to um, have any delays. I had six rounds of chemo. They were three weeks, three weeks apart each. So I had a begin date and an end date and I wanted it to happen in that time period. And um, so I 
consciously was like, let's find something to laugh about. And I would make little videos. I would take pictures. I would just see the ridiculousness. I try to cheer up other people. Um, we had my first treatment. People came in to the infusion room and were handing out flowers to everyone. And I had these beautiful orange and yellow tulips, I think they were. Maybe that's why I like tulips now. Um, another time a lady came in and handed out blankets. So whether it was something that I was consciously doing or somebody around me was doing, I was able to find things to laugh about. Now, did that mean that it was every single day and I never had a down moment? No. No, it wasn't. And I think it's important to understand it's okay to have those down moments. It's okay to have the pity party. It's very okay to cry. You need, you, these are the things that you're feeling and you don't want to bottle them up. You want to be able to let them out. You just don't want to stay in that place. And I think that's where you let it out. You have those moments. My mom would say, you know, it sounds like if I was really just, you could see it building up in me, the frustration and this, the fear and the anxiety and the anger. And she'd be like, okay, I think it's time for a pity party. So come on, let's go sit down. And usually it was in the chapel. We have a little chapel in our house. Uh, that's kind of mom's room. <laughs> and we go sit in there. She has two rocking chairs in there. And we sit down and she's like, okay, have the pity party. Say what you had to say. And I would just emotionally unload on my mom. I have to say that without my mom and dad, I don't know how I would have gotten through it, honestly. So it's not all on you. I mean, having a good support system, even if it's just one or two or three people that you can lean on, that's really important too. Having those pity parties, that's important. Have the pity party and then stop it. End the party. And maybe in a couple more days, have another pity party and then stop it. And in between that, find those things that are going to make you smile. And if you can do it every day, do it every day. If you can do it every other day, do it every other day. Do it enough so that it becomes unconscious, that you do it without even thinking. And it's going to start to play out in your life. I mean, it, w it was then when I was diagnosed and through chemo that I started to actively be like, okay, I have to make the effort now because life is that hard at the moment. I have to make the effort to find something to laugh about, something to smile about. And um, now, go from 2013 to 2020, and... I always joke, I'm, I'm the introvert forced to be an extrovert because of my job. And I love my job. The career path that I got on after chemo was amazing. It's wonderful. And I'm sure I'll go into it <laughs> in future videos. But um, that doesn't mean, you know, that every day I am jumping out of bed and ready to go to work and all that fun stuff. I am not a morning person. And drinking coffee doesn't make me feel good. So I I have to find ways, I know I have to find ways to make myself more of a morning person, even though I'm not. So, and this comes from that, you know, every day of consciously trying to do something, find something to make you smile, is when I walk into my office, I say good morning to everybody as I walk past them to my desk. And I had somebody comment, they're like, you're such a positive person. And that's, you know, you say good morning to everybody. And I was like, well, I mean, I try to be a positive person, but this is an effort for me. And I'm glad that it helps you have a good morning. And I think it does. I think when we say good morning to people, it passes on that, that good positive feeling. And um, I was like, but I, I've got to do this. For, it's a little bit selfish. You know, I need to do this for me so that I am getting myself going in the day in a positive, good way. So that when I am with my clients throughout the day, I can be positive for them. And this attitude, this mindset 
came from 22 years of consciously and unconsciously putting this idea that Pat Keats gave me of finding that thing to smile about. And I know it was really put to the test for me again last summer uh, when Pat passed away from cancer. And I remember uh, sitting with his wife in her kitchen and I mean she's become my sister. She became my dear friend when she married Pat and she has since become my sister. And I remember telling her about this and thinking, okay, I need to do this for me and I need to try to do this for her too. And it it did, it helped me and it it was hard, it's still hard, it's still difficult, but that advice he gave me when I was 18, 22 years ago, has helped me through so much, even last summer. And I really hope that I can pass this idea along and it will help you. So I want to challenge you ladies. I'm going to give you a challenge. So ladies, gentlemen, anybody who's watching this, every day, make an effort to find something to smile about. It takes 10 seconds out of your day. Whether it's a memory or something that you see, find a reason to smile. And that's how you stay positive. Say a kind thing to a complete stranger. Walk up to a stranger in the store and say, I like your hair. That's a nice purse. As you walk past somebody, smile and nod. You don't even have to engage any more beyond that. Or look around you. What, what around you can make you smile? What memory do you have that makes you smile? There's so many ways that you can do this. So I challenge you to make this a part of your daily life. And just because, you know, I'm going to practice what I preach, uh, the thing that I did today, the thing today that made me smile, <laughs> is, <laughs> sorry, this is making me laugh at myself. I'm laughing at myself. Um, I, I'm, I'm not good with plants. I'm horrible with, I can't keep a plant alive at all. Um, but I decided, you know what? I want flowers. I want, I'm trying to, I'm looking for a house. I'm trying to buy a house. And the more I look at houses, the more I realize <laughs> I've got to take care of a yard and I have to make it look nice. And so today, uh, I went and it was much harder than I thought it was going to be. I found some pots and some dirt and I had my seeds and I planted the seeds in two pots. So I have marigolds from Monticello and a pretty flower that I can't remember the name of it from a local nursery. And they're sitting on my kitchen table right now. And it makes me smile because... I'm looking at these pots and I'm an adult and I logically know it takes weeks <laughs> for seeds to start growing. But I'm so excited about it that an hour after I planted them, I'm like, is there anything green in the pot yet? No, no. It's just, just a plastic orange pot with dirt in it and somewhere in that dirt are the seeds and eventually they're going to plant. But that was my thing today that made me smile. It made me laugh. And not just for a second. It's, it's made me smile all day. So... I'm going to practice what I preach, and I encourage you guys to try it too. So I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, wonderful weekend, a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. God bless.